The fifth primitive on the modeling panel is the pyramid. Now a pyramid is a 3D object with a regular polygon as a base and which tapers to a point. And by default this uh, regular polygon is a square so if I begin by picking a center point for that square and then picking a second point which defines the point on the circumference of the circle about which the square is circumscribed and then a third point for the height of the pyramid like that. Now that's pretty straightforward but I want to now show one of the options on the command line. I'm going to erase this pyramid and start pyramid command again. Now you'll notice that uh, if you look at the command line there are a couple of options there, one of which is sides and sides allows me to specify the type of polygon which forms the base of the pyramid. So for example if I want a hexagonal base I can enter S for the sides option and then enter 6 for the number of sides. Again I pick a center point for the circumscribed circle, a radius point and then a point for the height of that hexagonal pyramid like that. There are a couple of other options with the pyramid command which are worth having a look at. Let's start pyramid again and you'll notice that uh, the first of the two options on the command line is edge. Now it's sometimes the case that you don't want to specify the base polygon using the circumscribed or inscribed circle options but to define it by the length of an edge. So if I type E this time for edge I can define the polygon by specifying the length of one of its edges like that and then a third point for the height. That's pretty straightforward. Let's erase that one and have a look at another option. I'm going to start pyramid again this time and I'm going to pick a point here like so and just pick the radius of the inscribed circle like that. Now this time instead of specifying a point by a pick I'm going to have a look at the command line and one of the options there says top radius and this is very similar to the uh, frustrum cone we did earlier, in fact it's the frustrum pyramid and if I enter T for top radius I'm able to specify the radius of the inscribed circle here like so and then with a fourth point I can specify the height of that frustrum pyramid like that and as in the previous cases this frustrum pyramid option is, is exactly the same as the frustrum pyramid tool shown on the palette here. The penultimate primitive on the modeling panel is the wedge and uh, this is a very simple tool uh, all we do is define a rectangle for a base and then a height for the wedge like so. Uh, once again there are a couple of options available one of which is worth uh, looking at so I'm going to erase this wedge like that begin again pick a point here and then rather than picking the second point I'm going to use the cube option uh, on the command line I'm going to enter C for cube and what happens is that all the sides are the same length uh, other than those on the sloping face of course and I just pick one point to fix that like that the final primitive we're going to look at in this tutorial is the torus 
often referred to as the donut for obvious reasons. Now we draw a torus by specifying two radii, the outer radius of the ring and the inner radius for the tube. I'm going to start by picking a centre point and then a point on the circumference for the outer radius and then we specify, and you can see you can dynamically see this um, object being created I need to specify a point or enter a value for the radius of the tube like so. Now just as with the sphere the torus is created half above and half below the ground plane as you can see here but uh, once again it's a case of knowing the radius of the tube so that you can use the 3D move tool and move the torus up onto the ground plane if that's what you need to do.